Joining us to discuss how the NHS could use AI is uh, Professor Brian Williams, the Chair of Medicine at UCL and Director of UCLH Biomedical Research Centre. Thank you very much for joining us. How so far has uh, artificial intelligence been used in the NHS? So we're beginning to see it being used. I mean, for example, in our own hospital at University College London Hospitals, one of our scientists who works in AI has developed a predictive algorithm that allows us to predict who may not turn up for outpatients. That may sound not terribly sophisticated, but actually when you think about the number of outpatients that attend the NHS and the possibility to improve efficiency by using simple algorithms like that, the opportunity is enormous. So how well placed is the UK to develop a laboratory that the Health Secretary is talking about? Well, I think the laboratory they're talking about is the idea of having a sort of oversight of this whole process. Most of the work will actually take place in the partnerships between the NHS hospitals, the universities, where a lot of the talent sits, and also small and medium biotech. A lot of people don't realise that actually they often think of Silicon Valley and places like that, but actually London, just London, has as many developers, tech developers, as there are in San Francisco or New York or any other major European city. We have more tech startups than many of those places. So the infrastructure for this is in the UK. And of course, we have the NHS, which is an enormous opportunity to utilize that data with these developers to create opportunities for AI to be used. How worried, though, should people be about how our data, which can be Im immensely personal and confidential, is handled by the NHS if it's using that data for AI? Now, this is a really legitimate anxiety that many people have, but they should be reassured that actually the highest priority, I sit in the boards of the NHS, I see this happening in my own hospital, the highest priority is given to safety of patient data. And the important thing for people to realize is actually identifiable data. Data that people could identify an individual from is not required for these development processes. Most of the AI tech development takes place with data which is de-identified, and in many cases, synthetic data, which isn't even real patient data. It's just modeled on patient data. So I'm quite excited about that opportunity. I think there are many other areas where there are legitimate concerns about use of individual data, but this isn't one of them. I think we can do a lot of work without necessarily using identifiable data. You've talked about some of the sort of practical administrative yes. applications, but what about the use of AI in diagnosis and sure. in treatment? I think there are three areas. Firstly, with all of the genomic data that we're now beginning to get access to on our patients, it's incredibly difficult for an individual doctor to process that complexity of information. So we need help. And when you begin to bring together all of the data on environmental factors, lifestyle factors, disease risk prediction, genomics, that is an enormous amount of data and it needs sophisticated computational models to analyze that data so that we can give treatment to patients. We can also predict when a disease might happen in an individual patient. Now, many patients may say to me, I don't want to know, doctor. But the reality is it is important to know because new treatments come down the line that may prevent those disease developing. So in disease prediction, precision medicine, very important. The other area is diagnostics. So if you think about an x-ray, I mean, not that long ago, we were putting x-rays up on a screen and looking at them. They what, still do that in TV well, they dramas, do, don't they? They do that in many hospitals still. But the reality is, what we're looking at is a pattern recognition process. Now, if you feed multiple x-rays into a machine and tell the machine that is a normal x-ray, you can teach that machine to recognize normality. Now, the importance is that if we do thousands of x-rays in the NHS, it takes a lot of time for an individual specialist to look at every single x-ray. What we really want them to do is identify the x-rays which are abnormal. So if you are taking all those x-rays, you could have an automated process going on in the background that's identifying the abnormal findings and saying, look at this one first. So not only does it improve the efficiency, but it improves the speed at getting to the thing that we need to know about. So I think that's just one example. There are many others where computational processes in the background are going to speed up diagnostics. Professor Brian Williams from UCL. Thank you very much Thank for coming you very in. Much. Thank you.